Hey guys, I'm Wanda on this crazy days and welcome to the Cannon Kitchen. Today we're going to open up the Cannon Kitchen. We're going to be canning quarts. So, a lot of the information today will be dealing with quarts. I'm also going to be doing a 15,000 subscriber giveaway, so stay tuned. I'm going to show you a few things, but let's open the kitchen first. We take off this board the Danny belt with handles so that I can take and have an extra counter space over my stove when I'm not using the stove. But today, we're using the stove. We're going to be canning. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my water on and I'm going to get it going so that we can talk about some other things while the water is boiling that I need to put into my jars. I get my water up to the boiling point. It doesn't necessarily have to be boiling, but I want it pretty close when I start adding it to my jars. We're going to be raw packing. I'm going to be doing green beans, or actually yellow wax beans, um, a type of green, green bean or string bean or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to do some potatoes and we're putting onions in them. This is what I did with the pints. I'm just going to continue it with the quarts today. And we're mainly going to deal with what a quart jar is and things like that. Let's get some water going. It's going to take approximately this much water to fill seven jars because seven jars is what fits in my canner. Okay, one of the first things I do is I go ahead and get my water here, turn it on high, let this water start going. Over here, I have a pressure canner. Okay, I've had a few people ask about a pressure cooker, a six quart pressure cooker. That is not made for canning, that is made for pressuring beans and meat and stuff like that. This is a pressure canner and it may have the word cooker on the front also because you can cook in this. You can put meats and stuff if you're cooking for a huge big family. You can use this, but it is at least 16 quarts. This one's 16. They make a 20, 24, you can buy different sizes. This one has a piece that goes in the middle. This has a lip that keeps the jars off the bottom and airflow. It has to be in there. You don't want to use it without it. You put three quarts of water in here. This is the third one for me. And so I've got my water ready. I haven't got the fire on right now, but I've got it on this one. Mine comes like this with a jiggler. I use 10 pounds of pressure because of where my sea level. We're um, not that high. I think we're at 300, right around three. So I use 10 pounds of pressure. This little gauge comes with in three pieces. This is five pounds if you live in an area for five. You add the second piece, which is 410. And the third piece, if you're in a higher altitude, real high altitudes, have to have 15 pounds of pressure. So most of the United States is going to be at 10 pounds of pressure, but check your guides. Books. I think everybody needs a ball canning book. I own several. Um, this is an older one. This is my go-to. I really like it. But I was sent this one last year, and I have a video here on Crazy Days talking about this book. This one is from 1960. I was born in 1961, guys. 1960. The information in this little book right here still holds true today. It still works in 2021. One thing Ball does is usually the green beans, they do a step-by-step -step process. This was 1960. In this one, step by step, 1991 green beans. So not a lot's changed. Um, they do not show in 91 putting the lids in boiling water. It doesn't say anything about that. So it kind of changes over the years. They still work as far as timing, altitudes, things like that. Still the same thing. Have different recipes, all kinds of recipes in your ball books. Stay tuned for the giveaway. It's important. Okay, so today we're going to talk about quarts. These are quart jars. 
one is this size, one is this size. You see the tops? There's a difference. This one is a regular mouth ball jar. It takes lids and flaps like this. We're going to look at the size in a minute. This one is a wide mouth. A wide mouth you can stick your hand in. This one, you ain't getting your hand in there. Just saying. Okay, so regular, you can't get your hand in. Wide mouth, you can. So if you're putting something in a jar that you, a big something, it's easier to get it in, it's easier to get it out of a wide mouth. A wide mouth uses a bigger flat and a bigger ring. Notice the difference? See the sizes? Considerable difference, right? Considerable difference in price. When you're buying the jars, they're the same price as far as buying jars. When you're buying the flaps, difference in price. These approximately two to three dollars, these four to five. Just a big difference. Both of them you get a dozen in a pack, so it's the same thing. Potatoes. That's one thing today we're going to talk about potatoes. This is your friend. I had a canon class or two here at my house, and each time I did, I gave my ladies a peeler. This is just a regular potato peeler, right? Nah. I gave them the El Cheapos. The cheapies that you can get at the dollar store and the Wally World and all these places. I gave them one and let them start peeling potatoes. I handed one person the Rada. R-A-D-A. Rada. I'll have a link in the description below for some of these products. The person with the Rada threw the cheapie down and said, oh no, this. I will not do the cheapie again. Then I said, okay, give it up, give it to the next person. They had to go back to the cheapie, and the next person tried it. They said, oh, by far, throw away the cheapie. Time it went around all my whole class. Everybody used the Rada. Everybody used the cheapie. The Rada won everybody. Everybody said Rada. These things are about $10. For about $10, $12, $15, you can buy two of them. I would, I would suggest just going ahead and paying the money and getting two. It ain't worth paying $2 for something you're going to pitch in six months or so. These things last forever. Rada, I promise you, you want it. Stay tuned for the giveaway. Now, when you're washing jars, you want to have make sure everything is clean and you want to make sure you have no cracks around the rims. You run your finger. If you feel a nick, put this jar up, get rid of it, do something. But you do not want any nicks at all. I mean, you make sure. And when you're washing, this is your friend, full circle. I did a video showing some of these products. This is a sponge head. It's got all these little spongies that will break apart. It's not like a normal sponge. It's, and you can get replacement heads. This thing snaps off. You can get replacements. I'd suggest buying you one or two. I have several. And buying replacement heads and keep them stored up. This one has lasted me over two years. And you see, it still looks clean, still looks good. So what I usually do with these, I get them wet, then I stick them in the jar. Don't try sticking this in your jar not wet because it won't go. Now this one's wet, you ease it in, and you run it around the bottom and get it clean. And then you run it up and down all the sides and get it clean. Then you put it at the top and run it around this rim and then out and see it does that perfect. Then you can rinse the outside. It's great. Stay tuned for a giveaway. Now, we're going to be using quartz. I'm using the regular mouth today. I'm not using the wide mouth, so we're going to put that up. This is what I'm going to be canning today. I already have some potatoes green beans and onions. Now I've already done videos on how to can green beans, potatoes, and onions 
It's simply raw pack. We're going to put them in my quart jars. This time we're going to be using a teaspoon of salt in a quart where in a pint we used half a teaspoon of salt. So that's going to be a difference in what we're adding. Um, I'm simply going to raw pack. I'm going to put probably about this much onion, about a good double handful of green beans, and then I'm going to finish it out with potatoes. Now, I peeled my potatoes today, pretty much. They might be a spot or two, but for the most part, I peeled the potatoes because they're about two weeks old. If you want to leave the skins on your potatoes, do it within the first two weeks before the skin gets tough. Okay, so my water's getting ready. You ready for a giveaway? I know I'm excited. 15,000 subscribers. I have been waiting forever for 15,000 subscribers. I didn't think Crazy Days would ever get off the, you know, down here because I didn't figure many of you cared about what I thought. Crazy Days is my channel where I talk about whatever I want to. I am a part of Deep South. Danny and I have our Deep South Homestead channel. But at Crazy Days, I like to show nature. I like to show the funny things that go on. I like to can and I like to cook. And, and right now the freeze dryer is going in the background. And so if y'all hear noise, that's what is making it in the background. I've got a special. I'm doing something really different uh, with freeze drying right now. We're going to see how that works. I'll have another video later this week coming out because that freeze dryer will be something that I'll deal with in about two hours. Um, I just like on crazy days to enjoy life. And sometimes it's teaching and sometimes it's just a bug that's bugging me because I'm outside. This is an outdoor kitchen, guys, and you're going to have bugs. I have had people say, what do you do about the bugs? If you're that particular about bugs, go inside and can inside in a perfect environment. I've seen some of your houses. Okay, this is cleaner with the bugs in some of your houses. I'm gonna just say, y'all might not like me too much, but I don't like dirtiness when I go into can. I want something clean and neat. I usually clean my kitchen before I start canning. Danny, it drives Danny crazy. I've got all my jars done except this one. I've got a wide mouth funnel. It means it fits a regular jar but the mouth is wide enough that it captures stuff more than the little smaller ones I've got one teaspoon of salt so guys make sure that you get teaspoon not tablespoon and mine are magnetized I've got a whole set that is magnetized I showed in a video I love it all right now we're going to add in some onions Add in some beans and add in some potatoes. Now somebody's going to ask, how do I know how much of each to put in there? It is according to taste. Whatever you want, you add it in. And the reason I'm doing a bunch of videos that are mainly the same thing is this is what I have to can right now. And so I'm using the same recipe just in different ways to show you how different things work. Today we're talking about quart jars and this is what I have to work with. In a few weeks we'll have other things to can. Now what we're going to do is add my water. My water's hot so we're going to move over and start adding water to these. Now here I have a rubber mat that I bought. It's just a bar mat. That's all it is. It's called a rubber bar mat. You can get them in different sizes. I don't know. This one's like 12 by 17 or something like that. 13 by 17. I don't know. I put that on there because I can sit and bounce my jars. And you see my potatoes went down some. I can add a few more potatoes if I want to because they went down a little bit before I even put the water in. And by bouncing it on this, I'm not breaking my jars and you're not bouncing hard. We're going to add water. And I do use this Tupperware thing because my water is not boiling. It is just to the boiling point. It's getting the little bubbles. I don't want to break a jar because I'm raw packing. I just want some hot water going over to get my jars started heating up before I put them in the canner. 
I get it up to this bottom rim here. Now there's a lot of people say a lot of things about where to put it. They say a half inch head space on the inside and things like that. I'm not sitting measuring. I pretty much know if I got it to this bottom rim, I'm good. And you can use chopsticks as a debubbler. Now I said something before that I've never debubbled before till I started YouTube. To be honest with you, I'd never heard of it. Uh, I grew up in an era where the people I knew that can didn't have a debubbler. But you can pack this on down, and if you wanted to add another potato or two, you could. This is where a lot of people say you need vinegar, you need water, you need a cloth, you need uh, a napkin, whatever. I'm using a cloth today. You can take a little bit of vinegar on it and wipe it around, and you're going to have a clean top. Ball doesn't recommend you boiling these anymore, so we're not boiling. We're simply putting them on. Hand tight. And I've had somebody say I'm really bearing down on it. I have weak wrists, so that's tight. I don't, I mean, I can just do that and it's untight. So I'm not bearing down. If you are a man of a woman or a woman of a man, don't bear down real hard. Just get it where once it stops turning, that's it. That's all I'm doing. Now, we're going to put it in our canner over here, and I'm going to turn the canner on on low so it can start heating up as we finish this process. Down to the last one, and if you wanted more green beans, I would add more green beans. If you wanted more potatoes, add more potatoes. It's according to what you want in the jar. You can do lots of potatoes and a few green beans, lots of green beans and a few potatoes. A quart jar usually will feed four people at one meal. So a family of four, a quart should feed them. So proportion out things accordingly. If you want all potatoes, put all potatoes. Potatoes go 40 minutes. If you want all green beans, all green beans go 25 minutes for quarts. Now pints is five minutes less. You can put onions, you don't have to put onions, but salt, non-iodized salt, is very important. I always put salt, non-iodized means it. my jars stay pretty. Now if you're getting kind of a milky look in your jar and you're using iodized salt, that may be why. Another thing, we're on well water. My jars, you see this, they look nice. And when they come out of the canner, they usually look really nice. We're on well water. If you're on uh, community water or a municipality water, you're going to have a milky jar. There, there's so many chemicals in your water that you're putting chemicals in your jar. You're putting chemicals in your body. So just know if you're on a municipal water source, you're going to be putting it into your jar. That's all, uh, unless you buy bottled water, I don't know what else to tell you. If you have a purifier, like a, uh, an Alexa Pure, we have an Alexa Pure over at the cabin, but if you have one, purify your water before putting it in there. Maybe that would help, I don't know. Just trying to give you some suggestions there on why your glass jars look weird once you've canned them, you know. We have seven jars in here. In a 16 quart canner, seven is all you can put if you put quarts. Now pints, you can do nine pints. I have three quarts of water in there and I do not put anything else in my canner. Some people put vinegar, some people put other things in there. I don't put anything but water. And again, that's because I'm on well water. I just lock it down, make sure this is locked, these here, and I always make sure the rubber seal on the back is good before I start. And you lock it down there. It is okay, you're good to go. I've got a timer here, we will start timing at 40 minutes once the jiggler starts. You do not put the jiggler on until you've steam, got steam coming out. Most people go 10 minutes with the steam just to make sure there's no obstruction here. We time when the jiggler starts dancing and we'll get to that in a little bit. It's time for the giveaway. I'm going to be giving away 
for my 15,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away one of these, the jar brush cleaner, sponge cleaner, whatever you want to say, one of these. I'm going to be giving away one of these, a Rada knife. I'm going to be giving away a ball blue book, but not one of these. Just saying, you're not getting mine. I'm going to be giving away the newest edition they have out now. And it will be a complete edition, so you will get that. I'm probably going to break it up into three winners. That way I have three winners. One gets the ball book, one gets the peeler, and one gets the bottle brush. And I'll probably include something else in each one of those, but that's the main prizes for all three. Um, I do believe in keeping people canning, and I'm not an expert, just saying no way, no how do I pretend to be an expert. I am who I am, and this is what I do. I can. And I can because I can. And because I like to can. So the canning kitchen was my idea of just having fun, showing you guys what I do. I don't care if you can or not. That's beside the point. Just enjoy the ride and come along with me. So I reached 15,000 subscribers. I'm going to be giving this away in the comments. I want to know, no, I've never canned. I've only water bathed. I water bath and pressure can, and I love it. That way I know who knows what. And beside it, you can say, I own all three, I own none of them, or I own one of the three. All right, so it's a 15,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm super excited. Can't wait to get to 20, and we will find something even better to give away. My 15,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm excited. I hope you are. Comment below. Now, we're going to be waiting on this pot to gain pressure and start putting out steam. That's going to take a while, so I'm just going to leave this alone. Um, we'll come back in a little while because this process right here, waiting on this to get to steam and to let it go for a little while, like I said, most people go approximately 10 minutes to make sure there's no obstruction. That could take 15 minutes or so for it to get there. I have this many beans and onions left and I have a floor full of potatoes. So while I'm waiting, I'm going to go clean some more potatoes and we're going to do enough for nine pints and I when the canner with the quartz quits I will turn around fill it up and do nine pints on top of that now steam has been coming out of this we're gonna put the jiggler at 10 pounds on watch this it came up that is sealing it off so that the rest of the pressure and I just take the water off you don't have to but I don't want to drip it on stuff um, the rest of it will start building up pressure pretty fast and we're waiting on this to start jiggling. This is starting to do the little jiggle and I've was talking to my daughter the other night she canned green beans for the first time and I told her it needed to look like a hula dancer just smooth and steady not like Shakira Shakira's just a like this hula's smooth and steady I'm gonna turn this down a little and I want to keep it at this jiggle I don't want it to get overly jiggling and I'm gonna start my timer at 40 minutes because it's been doing the little hula for a, nearly a minute. So we're getting ready for round two. When this pops down, we're going to take the jars out of there. It just went down. So we're going to take this. There's no steam anymore. You see that? No steam. Anytime you open a canner, make sure when you open it, you open it away from you. That lets the steam go behind it because if I'd have opened it this way, the steam would have come out in my face. 
always open it away from you. And as I came up, you saw I went over the pot, so any water dripped into the pot. This has the rubber on it for picking up hot jars. This is normal for regular mouth jars. And I space them out to give them some space so that they can have airflow and cool off faster. And by the time the other jars are through, these will be cooled off and can be moved. I leave the bands on these for 24 hours. And I make sure that I hear them all pop. Or after a while, we'll come back and see if you can mash them down and they, they make a spongy feel or something. They're not popped. You should not be able to mash the tops down at all. So the rings stay on for 24 hours. You make sure they all sealed, that they are down, not up, and then you write on the tops. So one of the questions I get asked all the time is, how long do you pressure can quartz? That will vary according to what you put in the jar. You can't say, I've got a quart jar, let me pressure can it at blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work that way. Whatever you're putting in the jar, look it up to find the time. Because like green beans, they go 25 minutes. Potatoes, English peas, things like that go, uh, your field peas, go 40 minutes in a quart. Then you move on to like meats. You add meat to anything, it's got to go an hour and a half. Corn, an hour and a half, 90 minutes. Don't fudge on those times, guys. Make sure you do what the time that it says. Um, one thing, um, soups and stuff, lots of people want to put meats and corn in their soups. Just know, if you're going to do a soup or a stew, you put meat and corn in it, 90 minutes, automatically, 90 minutes. That's why you see me doing potatoes, green beans, and onions. That's my basis. I have meat that I've canned, like the turkey that I did. I have a jar of turkey that I canned for 90 minutes. I can open that jar of turkey and the broth, dump it in with my, bean, my potatoes, my green beans, and my onions, and heat it up, and I'm ready to eat. I can throw in some Miss Lippies Bayou Blends and, and give it some seasoning. We're ready to eat. Heat it up. It's, it's that easy, guys. So, just don't. It's just in time. So, that's where we're at today. I'm going to be closing out the canning kitchen right quick. Seven jars here, quartz ready to go. Nine more pints in the canner. We will be doing that and taking them out after a while. Um, 15,000 subscribers. I'm excited. I really am excited. I hope all of you will comment and tell me what I asked earlier in the video in the comments below. One day next week, I'll announce a winner and we'll go from there. The Cannon Kitchen's going to be open all summer. Look for some personal Cannon classes here at my house, hopefully. Uh, probably in June. Let's just say toward the middle to end of June, if you are in the area or you don't mind driving, you can come to a personal class here at my house in the Cannon Kitchen. So I hope you learned a little bit about quartz and canning with quartz today. And we're gonna be sitting down for a while. I've been on my feet for about three hours, four hours now, and I'm tired. I'm gonna sit down, watch my pot, and y'all, the canning kitchen's closed. Bye guys.